Hi there. Welcome to this short series of videos where I'm going to be looking at building balsa model aeroplanes just from plans, not from kits, just from plans. Now, if you're anything like me, you love working with balsa, you like the actual process of doing the building yourself rather than getting a kit that's all laid out. I love flying, but I love building just as much. And for me, that's as much of the hobby as the flying is itself. Now in this um, video, this first video, we're going to be looking at uh, choosing your plans, interpreting the, uh, the plans, and some of the pitfalls that you need to look out for, selecting your timber and how to make sure that things like your engine actually fits. So, to start with, let's have a look at plan selection. Right, well plan selection is really, really important. And I've got this plan on the wall of an Avanti Patterns plane, 60 inch wingspan, 60 size engine. How did I choose this as a plan to build? I've actually already built some, uh, a model of this and I'm halfway through actually building a second one because I gave the first one to a good friend of mine. Now, when you first start looking from, uh, when you first start looking to build from plans, I would suggest that you try and find a plan that has lots and lots of detail on it. The more information you can get, the better. As you get more experience, then the less information that you perhaps need, and you can deal with plans that actually have very little on them, and you can still build a flying aircraft. Personally, I like to get as much information as I can. And this is a classic example of a brilliant set of plans. We've got this lovely side elevation here with some really interesting detail that I'll show you in a minute close up. And we've got a, an isometric kind of view here of the nose of the plane, which is, you don't often get this but without it, you would be really scratching your head with these plans, trying to determine what goes on. Because when you're building from plans, you're trying to take that plan view, the side view, and also the isometric view, and you're trying to interpret that into a 3D image of how it all goes together. So the more information you can get, the better. You can see on here, we've got the formers for the fuselage and also some of the pieces that go into the nose. Now, the wings, there's another set of plans for the wings and they are just as detailed. They have the individual rib templates and the wing all laid out so you can build on top of it. These really are good plans. Now, as I said, I think the more information you can get, the better. Now, this set of plans here has a central datum line which shows us the centre of the plane looking from this um, plan view. Now, or this, yeah, this side plan, uh, side elevation, sorry, this side elevation. And we also have a couple of other interesting bits of information which you don't often get, well, a lot of plans don't have this anyway. We've got here zero incidents for the tail. And that's what it says just under the tail, zero incidents, zero degrees incidents. And that is taken from this datum line here. So basically it shows you that the tail plane is in the same uh, orientation, zero degrees with this datum line down the centre. And that's really useful to know because this central line going down here, this datum line, is also the same as the top of the fuselage here before the turtle deck goes on. So we can use that to help us in actually setting the tailplane in its position, its final position when we glue it. The other really useful information is we've got uh, 1 16th of an inch positive incidence on the wing here. And so we know that we can set this 
accurately to how the designer specified it. Now, I'm just going to zoom in and we'll have a look at an area of the plan here and just show some of the really useful information that's here and how we can interpret it. Because when we're building a kit, the materials are supplied for us. The uh, formers are often laser cut out of the right material. So we don't have to necessarily interpret what the designer or the draftsman uh, was envisaging by the, uh, the lines that are on here. So I'll zoom in now and we'll have a closer look. Right, we can see on this plan now we're a little bit closer in the uh, 116 incidents which perhaps didn't show up particularly well earlier. We've also got information like the down thrust, one and a half degrees of down thrust and this shows zero thrust zero degrees of thrust here so there's no right or left thrust it's dead straight and we're talking about the engine here the engine alignment now something that we need to be able to read when we're looking at this plan is the type of timber that is being used and the different types of timber whether it's hardwood balsa um, plywood all has a different type of patterning there's a little bit of variation between draftsmen and designers but it's always possible to tell the type of wood that you're working from and this isn't something that you'd necessarily need to know if you're working from a kit so here we have a slightly jagged continuous line which is in an indication of plywood and if we look at the end grain of plywood we've got the parallel lines shown here whereas that's very different from balsa which is the, the spotted here is the, the stippled that's the end grain of balsa and um, if we look at the, the short striations here the short lines that's looking at the side or the top of balsa and we've got another pattern here a wavy pattern which is showing us the end grain of hardwood and again V shapes here showing hardwood. So this is something that we really need to familiarise ourselves with and as we become familiar with working from plans we will automatically be able to read that and understand what the designer and the, the, the draftsman is showing us. We've got another different pattern here look which is just showing that this is a plastic uh, canopy. Now the one thing that it, uh, the other thing that is on here worth pointing out is we've got here soft balsa and all over this plan in different areas there's uh, soft balsa there's medium balsa there's hard balsa depending upon what's needed and what the designer wanted us to use for that particular um, particular structure now when we're working from plans we need to become very sceptical and have a healthy degree of mistrust. Irrespective of how good the plans are, how good they were when they were originally designed and drawn, there is likely to be some form of error. And this could well be simply from the scanning of the original plans or maybe the copy shop you went to, the printer, maybe there's a little bit of stretch or a little bit of shrinkage, or maybe the plans were originally from a kit and the, the draftsman didn't um, think that people would be actually using them to measure the, uh, the, the actual components themselves. They thought they were just a guide as to how they went together. So we always need to be checking and rechecking. Now, for example, if I'm building this fuselage, I would do the longitudinal sides first and get them both identical. But then before I did the cross formers, I would measure the cross formers, the, the patterns that we've got. I would then measure that against the fuselage side to check that they're the same. Where we've got a section of fuselage which is parallel, which is this front section, and actually check that they're all the same size or work out the same size 
when they're put together. It's, I've seen so many variations of error in plans uh, and you just really need to keep on top of it, measuring, checking. You can't cut out, you can't make the sides, cut out the formers and expect it to all go together necessarily. Also check the height against the height on the side of the fuselage. It's really important that we have that kind of level of mistrust. Now, one of the things that I see fairly often actually is whether people saying, do you cut to the outside of the line, to the inside of the line, when you're actually doing things like formers or wing ribs. And I guess as long as you're checking and measuring and you're consistent, it doesn't really matter. Personally, I always cut around the outside of the line and lightly sand so I'm just going into the line a little bit. But as I said, I don't really think it matters as long as you're consistent and you're checking and measuring all the time to make sure that it's correct. Now there are lots of sites online where you can get model aeroplane plans from free flight control line, radio control and you can get PDFs, uh, CAD files. I usually get PDFs because they're just easier for me to work with at the copy shop. Now the two main sites that I use are Outer Zone and Aerofred and they have an excellent selection of plans and if you look in the description below I'll provide a link to those two sites. When you've chosen your plan you need to get it printed out. Now there are several ways you can do this. You can go to a copy shop and you can get a full size plan printed out which is what I invariably do. You can go into uh, the PDF reader and you can print big plans like this as small tiles so A4 size that when stuck together will make the plan as a whole. So if you want to print it out yourself that's certainly something you can do. As I said I prefer to print it out full size if you search around you can find really expensive printers but you can always also find fairly cheap reasonable printers and uh, once you've got that print shop it's really good to develop a, a good relationship with them because sometimes you need to trim the borders a little bit to get the print on a size uh, a big sheet of AO paper and what I would always say and I think this is really really important and valuable is to get two. Two big prints of what you want to build. So you can put one on the wall and the other you can put on the bench and cut up or do whatever you want to do. But I find it so valuable to have a, 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 a plan on the wall. I've got this Avanti here. I've got a, a Fly Me by Hobby and Hobbies here. And I've got more space over in the other side of the workshop where I've got plans. And I find it so good because I spend so much time just stood here staring at the plans, trying to envisage how that goes into a 3D plane from these 2D images. Most of us probably start building by getting ourselves a kit. And they are fantastic, a really great way to learn. But one of the things we don't learn when we're building from kits or not, not as much as we need when we start building from plans, is timber selection. When we buy a kit, hopefully the manufacturer has selected the right type of balsa for the right um, structure within that plane. So if we're building a, a Spitfire, perhaps, they've selected some really nice light balsa for the tail. If we come along and build a Spitfire from a plan, put some really heavy balsa in the tail, we could end up with some problems. So it's really important that we learn what timber to use and what actually timber we've got once we've bought it. Now, if we look at these plans, we've got useful information, like I said earlier, like here, hard balsa, um, wing tips, we've got soft balsa, I don't know whether you can actually read that, probably not. Trust me. Now the first thing I do when I buy some balsa, you can buy balsa soft, medium or hard, 
generally. Whatever I buy, whether it's a soft or the medium, there's always going to be a, a, a range of, uh, of, of weights really within that medium or soft. And the first thing I do is I take the balsa that I've just bought and I weigh it. And I've got a pair of kitchen scales which are fairly accurate and I just hold the balsa on like that and 57 grams. And I go, I will, oops, what I will do, I will write 57 grams on that and I will go through and, so that's quite hard actually, and I will weigh every piece of balsa I've got. And you can see on the top three pieces there, hopefully there's a weight. Now, it's not just about weight, it also depends on where the balsa was cut from the, the log as to the properties. But weight is a pretty good indicator and it's primarily what I go by. So if I want a nice soft bit of balsa, I go to the back of the pile and select something from there. If I want something hard, I look at something heavier from the front. As I said, it's not just about the weight, it is also about where it was cut from the log and I would urge you to read up a little bit about timber selection because it's, it, it's really useful and if you're building, as I said earlier, a Spitfire, it's perhaps critical to get the balsa, balsa selection right. If you're building perhaps a top wing trainer, maybe not quite so critical and um, you know, you can use a bit heavier balsa perhaps. But it does affect the way planes fly and if you're building from plans, it's something that we need to get right. As I said earlier, when we're building from plans, we need to check and double check and check again everything. And this particularly comes down to our engine selection. Now, when I choose a set of plans, I've often got in mind the engine that I want to use. And for me, it's as much about the engines, quite often anyway, as it is about the plane itself. Now, this is a lovely Irvine 61. And I'm gonna put this in this Avanti. But when we actually hold it up against the plans like that, we find that the nose is not long enough. I'll just zoom in on that and so you can see. But that engine, it's a 60, this is a 60 size Enya that's in there, but I want to put my Irvine in. It won't fit unless I modify the fuselage. There's several ways we can do that. We can either move the firewall back or we can move the spinner forward. Depends on the plans, depends what you want to do. It also depends on the weight of your engine. This engine is quite heavy. If I move it forward, the nose forward and the engine forward, then it's going to alter the CG. So these are things that we need to consider very, very carefully. So make sure you know what engine you're gonna have and how it actually relates to the plans. So now you've selected your plans, you can read your plans, you know what balsa wood you're going to use, you've even sorted out your, your engine and whether it will fit or not and make decisions on how you're going to make it fit. Now the next thing we need to start thinking about, which is going to be the focus of the next video, is how we actually transfer the images that we've got onto the balsa wood and how we're going to create the parts that we need to make this into the beautiful aeroplane that the designers have drawn for us. The more you work with plans the easier it gets and the easier it is to interpret them and all the more rewarding it is when you do that maiden flight. But anyway, I hope you found that useful and please join me for the, uh, for the next video, as I said, where we're going to be looking at how we get the images onto the balsa, balsa and how we create those components ready to start building.